Okay, we're ready to go. We can go together if you want to. Sure. No. All right, questions. Chip. Um, yep. Second half the other day, uh, I'm obviously guys on the half of the spring point eight things like that. Did you feel in looking at the tape mm -hmm. that Duke and in particular kind of slowed the offense down? You know, it's a good question because it's it's uh, one of those things. I, I really love the week of practice we had. I love the way we started the game, the first half. Uh, just in the second half, I told the guys this. I said, you know, I just couldn't get us. It's on me. We didn't get back in a rhythm for whatever reason. We can say, you know, this or that. But at the end of the day, it's my job to get it done. And, and you know, we didn't get back in a rhythm and put ourselves in some long yardage situations with a couple penalties and then, you know, and, and not being really good early in the, in the downs, first and second down. And, you know, give due credit, they did a good job, but nothing really different than the first half. It just comes down to we need to execute better in some places, but mostly it's, you know, I got to do a better job of getting us going. And we got into a little bit of a lull there and, and couldn't get out of it, and the defense was battling and biting their tails off. So, you know, the way I see it is uh, we got to coach better, and we'll coach better, we'll play better. And uh, so, and I told our players that I'm always real honest with them. And, you know, point out some things, you know, you play college football 70, 80 snaps a game, you're going to make some mistakes here and there. But at the end of the day, you know, it's on me. we got to get these guys uh, a better opportunity to get to get things back in rhythm. And I think that's really what I felt like in the second half. We never got back in rhythm. The first half, I thought we did, you know, hit some plays and so forth. And uh, so got to got to really go back to work and, and do a better job. Is there a concern? Is that with the offensive line and having, you know, had some guys banged up, some guys were sick, inexperienced, yeah. things, so much of that, not that that's all the blame. No, uh, no. Just having that kind of You know what, though, they all they all handled it well. I mean, they, they kept battling and fighting. So, you know, and sometimes you just got to be next man up uh, mentality. And honestly, when you're upstairs and, and you're not right there on the field with them, you don't really feel all that. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of confidence in the eight, eight or nine guys that play. And, uh, that wasn't the issue at all. Um, I think those guys played their butts off and competed, and and uh, you know they 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 at times we look really good. I think our deal on offense is we got to be more consistent, you know, and that's from myself, coaching standpoint, also playing. But we got to be stay in rhythm, be more consistent, and uh, don't put ourselves in in tough situations. Is there a level of concern about the number of touches Omarion's getting? He had 35 against mm -hmm. Minnesota, including the two penalties. Yeah. I think he had 35 the other night as well. Yeah. I think so. I think I think we've got to, you know, probably probably got to. I got to do a better job of getting some other guys in there to take some some relief on. It's hard when you have a, a great player like him. Um, he he's a warrior. He he wants to play every snap. He's he, I mean that's what he is. I mean he has the ability to come out anytime he wants uh, from the standpoint of you know he's gassed during a drive or whatever. And, He's a huge part of what we do, but we got confidence in some other guys. So I got to do a better job of probably getting taking a little bit of a load off him. And uh, you know, we want to be a run play action team. That's what we want to be. But we need to be better in some other areas to help take some of that load off of him. For sure. How do you balance the idea of not giving him so many touches, not getting him hit yeah. so much? The idea he's so good yeah. that he's your best option. Yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough balance for sure because uh, you know a lot of times you're getting. Right, caught up in the moment of the game, and you're just going, going, going. And I think, uh, you know, Larry, Larry and I have had great discussions about this, and Coach Brown. So we gotta, we gotta make sure we have a plan, stay with our plan. And uh, at the end of the day, you're right; he's he's the best player, in my opinion, in the country. So you want him in there, but you know, we need him the rest of the season. So probably need to do a better job of uh, rotating some guys in there to help him a little bit. Chip, what are you seeing from Pitt when you just in their early scouting? Yeah, uh, similar to what we saw. I mean, these guys are very uh, physical. They're very uh, uh, give you a lot of looks. Uh, do a great job of trying to overload you in, in the box, and we didn't handle that great. So I'm sure we'll get that. And uh, Coach Nardizzi, we got a lot of respect for him over the years, seeing his defenses uh, and watched him from afar. And then last year, and um, he does a great job. He's a he's a guy that's a defensive head coach. You can tell, and the players play with a lot of confidence. They're very physical. They play fast. Um, and, and it's it's a similar team that you've seen from those guys. They're going to challenge you and contest all your throws and and make you earn everything you get. And you know, again, we, we have to do a great job of, of staying in rhythm. I think to have an opportunity to score some points, and uh, that's kind of what we're trying to focus on. Just building on Yeah, I think it's difficult because there's not a lot of free access. You know, the guys are they're pressed most of, a lot of times, and, and they'll 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 do some off, but they'll they do a great job of disguising. Uh, you can tell he's got a system in place that I know he's he's been really effective with over the years. They know 
you know, where their weaknesses are and, and where their strengths are, and, and the players know that. I think anytime you have a system, whether it's offense or defense, and your players have a, a really a, a full understanding of what, what the system is or what the play is you're running, you know, the concept and kind of why we're running the play, I'm sure that's how he approaches defense as well. Then you can tell those guys very well coached. They understand, you know, where their troubles could be in every call they have, and uh, just really impressed with what I've seen on film. Chip, along the same lines of, of what uh, AJ and the guys were talking yep. about with the touches for Omarion, as you were coming into the season and Barlow was healthy, yeah. like just as you're thinking things through, how many carries or touches did you sort of envision for Dar Darwin as like a guy to spell Omarion? Yeah. I mean, I, He's had one carry this year. I know right. he's been hurt. Yeah, I think I think in, you know we talked about early in the season that twenty to twenty five range, you know, and that's probably including he had a few catches the other day, I think, too, including the catches. But um, you know, you know, we got a lot of confidence in Bullet too. I mean, he's come in and done well when he's in the game. It's not like he he doesn't understand what's going on. So I think that's really on me. Got to making sure that I take care of him a little more and, and get some guys rotating in there. Coach, um, Jacoby was moving well within the pocket um, on Saturday's mm -hmm. game. What have you been working on with him and how have you seen him hone his pocket presence these past two Yeah, days? it has improved. I think he does a really nice job of keeping his eyes up as he's moving in the pocket and escaping. You saw him make a couple throws, I know, to, uh, to JJ as well as Kobe as he was sliding around and up in the pocket and we really worked hard of trying to make sure he understands certain drops, where what his depth needs to be. You know, to help our tackles or to help the O line because of their set. You know, depending on if it's quick game or drop back, and uh, all that stuff is, has to tie in together. And I think Jacoby's improved in that area. A couple times, probably a little deep uh, on uh, Saturday, and uh, he, you know, watching the film, I mean, it, it, he he understands that really quick. And uh, so I think he's improved. I think uh, you know, quarterback play guys. Some guys have a really good knack of understanding how to keep their eyes up without watching the rush, and I think that's one of the strengths that he's shown is that he can make plays in and around, moving in and out of the pocket, and, and really on the run, you know, for you know for a guy that, that, that um, hasn't played as much, it's pretty impressive to see what, he's, what he can do in those situations. In the times we've been around, he seems like a very mature mm -hmm. man, obviously yeah. he's had some ups and downs in his personal life sure. getting to this point. How much does that help him, you think, stepping into yeah. what he's stepped into here? With yeah, I, I, you know, I think your, your life, the things you go through in life kind of sometimes, a lot of times, they define who you are and what your personality maybe is or, or how you approach certain things. Um, getting to know him personally since he's been here is just really impressive. You're right, he's very mature. Doesn't have as much experience as maybe his maturity shows from who he is as a person. I think that's a testament to, to you know, his growing up and, and, and what he's learned throughout the years. But, um, you know, he's a very mature guy. I think he handles, he's never too high, never too low. I think that's a really good quality to have as a quarterback, and probably life experiences have helped him with that. I saw uh, Gavin Blackwell get um, yep. some snaps early in the game, and he, had, he obviously had that long catch on the final drive. Has he sort of been steadily improving in practice where he was able to earn those snaps? <laughs> yeah, I think we, I think Lonnie, Lonnie and I are trying to figure out, okay, what's the right combination of guys that are, that we can play? Uh, you asked me. You were asking about Amorian earlier, same way with the wideouts. You know, you don't want three guys playing 80 snaps, and Lonnie's working through that, I think, you know, and, and really we compete in practice, and a lot of it depends on practice. You know, how do, how do they practice that week? I know he, he bases a lot of that uh, on, on how, on how who plays and what the rotation looks like. And then, you know, one thing with two is we have a lot of different personnel groups, some 10, some 11, some 12. Bryson, you know, move him around, so sometimes that factors in to – how many reps the receivers get, and uh, each week's different based on the game plan. And um, so, but I like the progress that Gavin has made to answer your question. And you know, we need him down the stretch. He's a he's a guy that's played some and played and done well. Had a, I remember the huge catch he had in the bowl game. So uh, we need him to keep coming on, and he's improving for sure. Jacoby took a lot of himself after the game that night, and so we were asking him about not having a lot of time to go through his progression. And he said that he just has to get rid of the ball quicker. Mm -hmm. to an open receiver as yeah. soon as they're open. How does a guy that's been in, I guess it's so hard to simulate game yeah. stuff, so he hasn't really had that before. Right. But how quickly do you think he can learn about going through progression, finding yeah. a second receiver when the rush is coming on, yeah. like maybe other guys that have played a lot more have been able to do? You know, you know, he's probably a little hard on himself. I would say there's probably five or six plays in his mind after watching it with him that he said, yeah, I missed that. The ball should have gone here. And, and that's probably what he's referring to. Because like I said earlier, I think he's really done a nice job of, of, 
keeping plays alive and pocket awareness and pocket presence. And so uh, uh, Jacoby is a, is a guy that uh, he's not going to point the finger at anybody. It doesn't matter if we don't pick up a pressure or we miss on, on the edge or something. So I think it's probably him trying to, trying to take the load. But really, if you go back and study what he did, and the thing I like that he's done too, he understands sometimes, hey, there's not a play there, throw it away. Play the next play, you know. And, uh, you know, we had, we had the interception. He still talks about James Madison where he threw back across his body. And, those are learning experiences for him, but I like the way he's getting the ball out of his hand. Uh, we all have things, I'm sure, that we'd like to take back from Saturday, and I'm sure he's referring to that. But uh, really, so far, I've, I've been impressed. And uh, you know, I told you uh, last week, I think, for the last three weeks, you know, since we lost Max, I mean, he has revved up everything from his trying to pro I mean, he spends a lot of time up here watching the film and studying, and trying to get ready. And I think some of that's really paying off for him. And again, we just got to be more consistent as a unit, and that's kind of what we're really striving for. We all know about his arm strength. Mm -hmm. He's missed long several times. Mm -hmm. That's just a matter of experience, learning to yeah. kind of get the right time. You know, that's a good question. I think sometimes it's the type of throw that he needs. The trajectory is what I'm talking about. You know, sometimes the throw calls for a, a, a back shoulder type throw to a big body on a good matchup like Bryson or so forth. And then sometimes the coverage is, hey, we want to throw the ball high and over the top. And maybe that some of that is experience, although in practice he gets reps of that. So. Um, you know, I know he was disappointed in himself on a couple of those for sure. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, in college football, they're going to make, you got to make contested catches. You have to, you know, win versus man coverage. And we had some opportunities where we did that and didn't execute. And, uh, you know, I think he'll learn from it, grow from it. And uh, we got to give those guys opportunity to get their hands on the ball for sure. Chip, Mac was mentioning, um, you know, just in a general sense that offensively you guys are seeing the safeties you know, sort of glued to the line of scrimmage and you need to be able to affect them more is what he was saying mm -hmm. and, and, and remedy that. Yeah. Um, you know, how do you try to go about doing that, again, in a general sense, yeah. not like an X and O give away what you're doing? Yeah. No. Like, is that a problem? That, uh, that sometimes it is, for sure. Um, sometimes uh, we're accounting for the guy with a snug split or, or whatever we're trying to do with a with going to block him, but at the end of the day, when we have a running back like Lamar, you're, you're going to get that each and every week, and we've gotten it each and every week. And sometimes we've handled it great, and sometimes we haven't. And you know, a couple times the other the other day, for sure we didn't. But um, you know, I think I think for us, there's a lot of different ways to handle it, and each week you're trying to figure out uh, the best way. Is it RPO? Is it uh, a tight split? Is it spread them out? You know, is it you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. Is it motion? You know, throwing the ball in perimeter, a lot of different ways to do it. And those are kind of some of the things, looking back, that, that you know, I felt like I could do a better job of in the second half when I say get us in a rhythm and help us a little bit. And uh, that's on me to do it. It's why I'm here. It's what I'm, I'm paid to do. So uh, we're going to work really hard and try to get better in those areas and, and uh, you know, try to make it as easy as we can for, for, for our guys to stay in rhythm. And I think that's the key to what we have to do. We, we didn't stay on the field enough in the second half. And that's, that's you know, the first half, it was it felt a lot better. And really, the only thing changed second half probably was our execution and the ability to stay on the field. Similar to that note, um, Duke seemed to sniff out a lot of your passing plays. Mm -hmm. um, how do you kind of improve that this weekend, especially facing Pitt? Is it a really yeah. physical oriented team? You know, you know you're right. They, Duke, Duke defended us well in some aspects. I think, I think some of our route running, we got to clean some of that up. Decision making at quarterback. Um, it, it's really, it, it's everybody involved. You know, uh, 11 people have to do their job on play really to make it, to execute it at a high level. And I think there were times that, you know, they, they had a, a good defense on or whatever. And, uh, but there's also times we had opportunities we missed. So you got to take advantage of those opportunities when we get them. That's why they're so big, because when they come along, you got to be ready to hit them. It seems like, you know, these young tackles are massive and maybe have struggled a little bit with speed guys on the edge these last yeah. few weeks. Is, is that something you observe? And I guess how can you kind of fix that? Yeah, you know, I think some of that is experience, like you're saying, being a young guy. But at the end of the day, um, you know, when you get in situations like at the end of the game, we're throwing, trying to trying to go get them, we're in six man protections, and they're they're somewhat on islands. That's tough on them, uh, and and it's a two minute or one minute situation, and those guys are really gassed up the rest of the passer. That's why we we try to help them some in different ways. Um, but at the end of the day, they are improving. I've seen a lot of improvement from say spring when we were doing that. Um, and, uh, you know, those guys are getting better each and every week. And, you know, playing tackle, that's why in the NFL those guys make the most money, those left tackles for sure, is because it's a tough deal. You're going to always be faced with their best athlete. And, uh, you know, we've got to continue to improve and then find ways to help them as well. Got time for one more. 
Unless we're good. Great. All right. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate it.